Hi everybody, I'm Carl from Street Shooter and this is the very first episode of This Week in Street where I break down the street photography and related stories that I found interesting on the internet every week for your pleasure. There's a ton to cover this week, so let's get right into it, shall we? Okay. First up, can you survive the A7 III hype machine? Oh my god. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of the A7 III. Basically, it's the ultimate evolution of the A7 series. I mean, new cameras come and go. That's not a new thing, but I can't personally remember seeing so much positive hype about the release of any new camera. People are in love with this camera and they can't stop saying positive things about it. Now, this can mean one of two things. It can mean, number one, it's actually that good, which is possible, or Sony has just become the master of generating this kind of hype. Which is it? Eh, it's probably a little bit of both. There's no doubt that Sony rounded up all the top photography people on YouTube and everywhere else across the net and shipped them off to Las Vegas for a few days of fun in the desert. They let them ride in dune buggies. They put them in a helicopter and sent them to the Grand Canyon. They let them photograph Marilyn Monroe and Elvis impersonators and models dancing. I mean, we've all seen the shots. It's been the same 30 people at the same locations showing how this camera does exactly the same thing for each and every one of them. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, Sony really understands the, the, the concept of influencers, but you also have to have a product to back it up. And the a7 III doesn't look like it's a slouch by any stretch of the imagination. This is the one camera that's probably gonna find a cure for cancer. It's that good. Or it's just another camera. I haven't reviewed it yet. Right now, here's what we know. It's a 24 megapixel sensor, 15 stops of diamond range. It's virtually the same autofocus system as their top tier A9. Oh, it uses the brand new Z battery, so you're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 700 shots. And that's been one of the problems with Sony cameras since day one. They've been terrible with battery life. So that's kind of promising. I don't know, it looks like a really solid system. For 2000 bucks, Sony's done one thing this time that camera manufacturers have never really done. It seems that so many camera manufacturers release sort of a basic version of a camera and then leave little points where people say, I wish I had this, I wish I had this, wish I had this, I wish I had this, so that they could just, the next version, the A7 III II, the A7 III III, would have those little tiny things. And, Sony's kind of given us a camera that does everything that anyone's ever asked of Sony. They fixed the battery life. You've got fantastic dynamic range. It shoots 4K video uncropped if you're shooting 24P. If you're shooting 30P, there's a tiny crop, but whatever. This thing's like a wonder camera. It's the Jesus camera of 2018. And I think that we haven't heard the end of this. I think a lot of people are gonna be switching to Sony. A lot of Sony guys are gonna be grabbing this camera. A lot of people are gonna be shooting with this camera. We're gonna find out as time goes on if it's living up to the hype. I've seen this camera in person. I've held it in my hand. I've shot with it. It feels pretty damn solid. I don't think that any corners have been cut here that are gonna make people regret their purchase. Heck, I might even end up getting one myself. You never know. It's spring. And every spring I got a new camera, so you never know. I'm gonna get another Sony. Oh no, the dark side. I'm going to the dark side. Ah, Sony. <gasps> Next up, let's talk about why I pre-ordered the Sony A7 III. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, he went and got one. Yeah, I did. Now listen, I'm a long time Fuji shooter. I've been uh, in love with the system. I'm still in love with the system. I like their build quality. I like their basic human interface when it comes to photography. You know, frankly, if I'm thinking about a street photography camera, Sony is the last thing that I would consider in terms of what I would want out of a street photography camera. So why am I spending my money on an A7 III? Is it the hype? I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of it's time to see if Sony's really got it under control. The price is right. The features are there. I don't know. I don't know if this is... The, I'm getting this to find out. I'm like Winogrand shooting something to see what it looks like. I'm getting this camera to find out if it's actually going to work or not. And that's really the only way that you can do it. So trust me, I'm one of the other reasons I'm going to get this camera is I'm going to do a thorough review on the a7 III as a street photography tool. And let's see if this thing's going to work out. Who knows? It might, it might not. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. So speaking of new stuff, there's a new version of Lightroom. It just came out today when I'm filming this. It probably came out a couple days ago when you're seeing this, but it's brand new version. It's version 7.CC 7.3. Um, Whatever, what did they change? Well, they've added A7 III support, hooray! They've made some improvements in the color science under the hood. They've changed the curves dialog box so that the actual graph is a little bit bigger, makes it a little bit easier to adjust. You know, since Creative Cloud went to a subscription base, Adobe has updates every few months. They have to. They have to justify the cost. So there's, speaking, we were talking about the Sony cameras and the incremental updates. You're always gonna see an update on Lightroom. The big important news is it supports the A7 III now. So all you guys that are shooting with A7 III, Fire up your Creative Cloud app, do your update, get your latest versions, and 
make the pictures look as good as you can. Next! All right, from new gear to old gear, sort of. Mobile photography is probably one of the fastest growing and most interesting sub-genres of street photography that's happening right now. Anyone who's ever shot a picture with an iPhone has come to love and hate that shutter sound. Turns out there was a video floating around this week from a sound engineer from Apple, Jim Weeks, talking about how he made all these sounds and the psychology and the battles that went back and forth and how things got named. But the one thing that he talked about was this shutter sound. And it turns out that he made the sound, he recorded it from his personal Canon AE-1, which was the very first SLR camera to have a microprocessor in it. So there's a weird legacy of technology that's sort of carried forward, and now it's the iconic sound that we all have to suffer through if we're ever taking pictures with a default app on the iPhone. And, you know, we all do, because it's there. And we're, we're just like, Kichi! wait, hold on, let me see if I can... Oh. <laughs> Links down below, check out the video, it's a fun little watch. As it turns out, he left Apple at the wrong time and all of his stock options would have been worth millions of dollars if he'd hung around a little longer and he didn't get nothing. He didn't get any royalties for any of this stuff, but that's what you get for putting that stupid shutter sound in my brain till the end of time. You know, you know you don't hear a lot about Vivian Meyer anymore. Since Cook County swept in and lowered the boom and created a government managed Vivian Meyer estate, it's kind of, the magic seems to have gone. It's just like, you know, the stuff's out there is still being sold. Maloof's selling his stuff. There's stuff happening in the background here and there. Books are happening. But for some reason, no one's really talking about it anymore. But who needs Vivian Meyer when you've got the Russian Vivian Meyer? Russian Vivian Meyer, way better than regular Vivian Meyer because it's Russian Vivian Meyer. Ah! Everybody talking about a Russian Vivian Meyer. I mean, if you go anywhere on the internet, any photo site these days, they got an article about the Russian Vivian Meyer. Asha Ivashinsova. Asha Ivashinsova. Asha Ivashinsova was shooting in St. Petersburg since she was 18 years old. She was shooting mostly on a Leica 3C 35mm, sometimes Roliflex, and when she died, she left 30,000 negatives, developed and undeveloped, in a box in the, in the attic, and no one had ever seen them. Sounds like Vivian Meyer, right? I guess. It's like, it's like Vivian Meyer without any of the mystery. It's just like, oh, someone left some negatives here. So, all right, well, let's see what they are. Oh, they're not bad. And, oh, it's a Russian Vivian Meyer. Uh, the only problem is uh, the images, you know, keep in mind that we've only seen a few of these images so far and there's 30,000 for them to go through. So who knows what we're gonna discover. But so far, the stuff is, it's got a snapshot aesthetic. It's an interesting glimpse into life behind the Iron Curtain. There's a lot of interesting things happening, but it's not on the same level as Vivian Meyer's work. Honestly though, it's, it's too soon to tell. Who knows, they, they could dig down a little deeper and find some of the most brilliant shots in the world. <sighs> I don't see it there yet, so. You know, it, it's a funny thing. Uh, online publishing is starved for content. It, it's starved for content that isn't a latest release of a lens or a, or a flash or a camera body or a review of a lens or a flash or a camera body. Anything that they can get their hands on that's not that and they're going to publish it. So when something like this comes along, a clickbaity title like, ooh, Russian Vivian Meyer discovered is going to be the angle they take on it. Their job is to generate views on their website. They're making money from advertising. This is the way the world works. So you got to take this whole thing with a grain of salt. I don't think anyone's trying to pull anything over on our eyes. I think it's just a matter of, hey, this is like, oh, it reminds me of Vivian Meyer. Found negatives in a box in an attic, never found them, a bunch of no one's ever seen it. Vivian Meyer, hey, it's the Russian Vivian. Links in the description. Check out the work for yourself. You decide if you haven't already seen it. Let me know in the comments what you think. So there you go. All right, next up, 24 Hour Project is set to go on April 7th. 24 Hour Project. Every year I say I'm going to do this, and every year I get like five hours into it. And I'm like, eh, I'd rather go to bed. The 24 Hour Project is a global street photography initiative where photographers document their world in real time over a 24 hour period. The idea is you take as many pictures as you want and upload one picture every hour to your social media, probably Instagram, with a certain hashtag so people can watch this unfolding in real time. You can submit all your pictures to the 24 Hour Project later. They're gonna have a traveling show and a book. This is a great idea and it's a fun event and every year I say I'm gonna do it. And every year I don't do it. I mean, listen, I gotta wake up and do things. I got jobs, I got work to finish. I, if it was like the 12 hour project, I could probably do it. I know photographers that do this every year, they love it. If you've got the stamina, get some friends together. It's a great way to spend a day, have some fun shooting. Upload everything to your Instagram account with the right hashtags. 
and watch this whole thing as it unfolds in real time. This whole thing is happening for a good cause this year. The whole thing is to benefit Shakti Vahini, a nonprofit organization in India which empowers, educates women. This is not some frivolous thing. Go shoot a bunch of pictures, upload what you can. You don't have to be in for the full 24 hour period, but participate in it a little bit. Show the rest of the world what your world looks like. It's kind of a fun thing to do and it's been happening for a few years now. So time to hop on if you haven't. Link in the description, check it out. Oh, the Kodachrome movie trailer. I know, I know, I'm an old timey film guy. So even the mention of Kodachrome and I'm like, where? Kodachrome? Hmm? Some background. Kodachrome was one of the most iconic film stocks of all time. It had this gorgeous tones, saturated colors. Photographers like Alex Webb made their careers shooting Kodachrome for good reason. But it was incredibly difficult process to develop this film. And as time went on, fewer and fewer labs were able to do it. Eventually, the advent of digital photography meant that Kodachrome was discontinued, I think, in 2009. The last roll of Kodachrome was developed sometime in 2010. It was the end of an era, and you know, even though Kodak kind of hinted that they're coming back, uh, it doesn't look like it's coming back anytime soon. But there is a Kodachrome movie, now it's not what you think, it's not the finding Kodachrome Meyer documentary that you might think, it's actually a Hollywood road trip movie. The father's a photographer, he's dying, he's got a few rolls of Kodachrome that he wants to get developed before the lab finally closes. They get together and go and get this film developed, it's got Jason Sudeikis in it, it's, it, listen, <laughs> It doesn't have a whole heck of a lot to do with Kodachrome, but it does have the underlying concept of loss and the end, the finality of, of the end of time. Uh, it's a great framework for a movie. So, hey, I'm gonna be watching it. It's out on April 20th on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, get Netflix. People don't have Netflix? Get it. It's like the thing. April 20th, Kodachrome movie. Links down there. Speaking of discontinued film, it looks like another Fuji film stock is biting the dust. Fuji Acros 100 is going the way of the Dodo. Now at this point, it's just all just a rumor. It's based on some sales sheets from Japan that have been translated that basically show it as being the end of the line. Nothing's been verified at this point, but you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. Film, I don't think you're gonna see in my lifetime and probably not in yours. Film's gonna be here in one form or another, but the sort of fringe emulsions are probably not gonna be around as long as we'd like. And that's just the simple fact of the matter. You're gonna have Tri-X probably, you're gonna have HP5 probably, uh, some form of color. I mean, they brought X-Chrome back, they brought T-Max 3200 back recently. So it's gonna be there, but it's gonna be the stocks that sell, that, that are worth generating. This is all capitalism at this point. So yeah, yeah, blah, 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 craft this, makes you a better photographer that, blah. If you're a film shooter, you get it. If you're not a film shooter, you don't give a flying <laughs> but you know, either way, I, I'm not gonna get into the, the digital versus film debate. I've done that. I got articles coming out the wazoo on that. That's not what this is about. This is really just about the eventuality. Film is just, it's a craft process. And either you're gonna start making your own film in the future, or you're gonna have to live with whatever emulsions are available when you wanna shoot. It's too bad to see Acros go. It was a really nice emulsion. It was a really nice film. It was super fine grain with a lovely gradation of tones. Eh, it's gone. What are you gonna do? Yes, and I got my degree in photography in 1990. I say this all the time. I've probably processed 10,000 rolls with Triax in my day. I know about film. I know how to make film look good and I don't care if I ever develop another roll of film. My life's taken away. I would much rather not be developing film. I don't care how good it looks. You know, at some point, the psychology of the frame has to take precedence over the, the process by which it was created. If you're into film, keep shooting it, that's great. But you know, if you're an Acros 100 shooter, you might wanna buy a couple hundred rolls because I don't think it's gonna be around that much longer. All right, and that's it for the very first episode of This Week in Street. It's not always gonna be news stories. It's gonna be stuff that I saw that I found interesting that week. It could be stuff that's really old, but if it's got something to do, even a strange close relationship to street photography, probably gonna be on here. So if you got something that you think might be interesting to be covered, shoot me a message. I'll be glad to hear about it. And remember, if you like this episode, hit that like button and subscribe. There's gonna be new stuff coming all the time, new episodes every week. Plus all the other stuff we do on Street Shooter, all the reviews and artist profiles and... Listen, this is my channel. I'm here to make content for you guys to enjoy. So if you like this one, let me know by subscribing and I'll see you next week.
I'm Carl from Street Shooter, and that's enough of me. Now get out there and take some pictures already. This week in Street.